I'm not sure what kind of weapon was used this time, but I can guarantee you American weapons will be used against us and Israel. Where did they get them? So if you had some advance notice and you had the guy, the ambassador, who the New York Times is making out just to be the nicest guy ever. He is so nice. He just loves the Arab world so much he wants to cuddle sometimes. We were thinking about calling him Ambassador Snugglekins for a while because he's just that cuddly. Really. He joined the Peace Corps. He joined the Peace Corps very early. Great. He loves people. Fantastic. Then he taught for a while in the mountains of Morocco. Mm. He speaks fluent Arabic. Whoa, that's great. And in some of the glowing articles that I've read about the ambassador, the great thing is he has, as an ambassador, he has taken cargo ships and hidden in the holes of cargo ships and snuck into countries in the middle of the night just to help them. Whoa, that doesn't sound like an average pencil-pushing ambassador job, does it? It sounds more like, oh, I don't know, oh, CIA. Now, who was it? that was brokering the deals in Benghazi during the Arab Spring. Oh, I know, the ambassador. This guy. Now, here's where it really falls apart. He's coming in from Europe, and he flies in. And he flies into Benghazi. Now, if if you're under alert at all, If you're approaching September 11th, the last place you are as an ambassador is in Benghazi. You are at the embassy in Tripoli. But if you look at the timeline, he flew in and they take him to two of his security uh, personnel, both former Navy SEAL State Department, code CIA, and I'll back that up here in a second. They pick him up and they pick him up in an unmarked, unarmored car. Now, I have news for you. I have armored vehicles. I have an advanced team. If I'm going to give a speech, my team usually arrives one to two days early. They know everything and everybody. They know how everybody's moving. They know exactly where I'm going to be, at what time I'm going to be. And if there's a problem, I mean, I was on vacation, and because my advanced team always does everything... When my wife had to go to the hospital in the middle of the night, they had already they had already talked to the doctors. They knew exactly where the hospital. I mean, it was amazing. And I'm a schlub. This is the State Department with an ambassador. Here's the speculation part. The ambassador finds out that he's got to get these weapons. And they're not going to deal with anybody who except except the guy who made the deal. Somehow or another, he gets on the he gets on the ground. He gets into this unmarked, unarmored car with these two CIA agents, and they're going to meet with whoever it is they're going to meet with. Somehow or another, the deal goes bad, or they get some something happens, and they have to get to the closest consulate. Now, the consulate is described in the newspapers as I mean, it had bars on the window. And may I just remind you that so do some of the finest liquor stores in Compton. This wasn't a consulate. This was a rental villa we don't have consulate there this is this is not secure this is a rental house it's a safe house why would you bring the the um the uh ambassador to a safe house something's going on get him into the house now how do we know where they were because and look it up there's one story out there and it's been verified now by several sources that the guy who's out looking for the weapons of mass destruction, he gets to the consulate and he's concerned because there are people now watching all three exits of this house. There's three ways to get out. And he noticed that they're watching all three. So what does he do? Now, he doesn't call the White House. He doesn't call the State Department. He doesn't call the, uh, the embassy in Tripoli. He goes to a gaming website, which is the first thing I would do. I'm like, I got to check with my pals in the gaming website. And he writes... We're in Benghazi at a safe house. If we get out of this one alive, I'll let you know. There are people watching all three exits. Gang, that's, he's not telling his, for, his friendly gamers. He's a CIA agent. He is telling people, 
This is where we are. Help us. Well, what happens? They start to um, attack the compound. I believe they call and say, with the bad guys, we need a diversion. We need to smoke them out. Get some people to protest. They smoke them out. They get into the uh, ambassador's car. They rocket missile the car. Kill them. Kill everybody. There's three people there. Everybody else is gone. There's three people there. They had no intention of the ambassador being there. Where's the advance team? Something went wrong. They got him to a safe house because he was doing something else with the CIA. He was looking for weapons that we gave the rebels. That's exactly what happened. All of this stuff is not that hard to track down. Now, there's some theory in there. My theory is, is that he came down to Benghazi and something went wrong. But explain, Mr. President, why was the why was the ambassador in Benghazi? Oh, was he teaching kids to read? Really? Then maybe you should answer why he was teaching kids to read on September 11th, when several sources now say you had a warning that something was coming. By the way, if you look at the timeline, they killed him before the riot started. Something's wrong. This is a massive cover-up. The press is involved in this. Whether they know what's going on, but there are questions that are not being asked. By the way, may I ask... Was the ambassador sodomized or not? Several sources say he was. Why? Why? Is there any reason why he was, if it's true? These people are religious zealots that are out of control. And everything they do is to send a message Was he sodomized? And if so, why?